With our lives becoming increasingly digital, it's so important to take a step back and evaluate that digital clutter as well as our physical clutter. So today we're going to be diving into ways to simplify and declutter your phone, your apps, and your social media use so you can create more calm and space in your digital life too. And you're going to save a heck of a lot of time. So let's go. And by the way, if you are on the fence about doing a digital declutter, check out some of these mind-blowing stats. Plus, check out this recent study from the Journal of Association of Consumer Research, which found that even the presence of a turned off smartphone lowers our cognitive performance. In other words, just having your phone in your area undercuts your ability to do good work and be productive. Plus, psychologists have found that even brief mental breaks created by shifting between tasks, aka cooking dinner and checking a text or working and checking an email, things like that and going from task to task to task can cost as much as 40% of your productive time. So I share these studies and stats because our phones and our digital clutter are massively impacting our time and our productivity. And if you think about it, phones are designed like these little slot machines. We don't need to go to Vegas to get all these widgets and sounds and buzzes and distractions, which is why my number one tip for you is to disable notifications on your phone. I did this back in 2020 and it is life-giving. Think about it. Who decides when you use your phone? You or your phone? In most cases, let's be honest, it's your phone. Your phone controls the relationship. And to flip that around, you need to get rid of all the things that grab your attention, specifically notifications that can be sounds or even just the little red dots on all the apps when you have alerts or news. So by silencing and disabling, again, we're talking about non-essential ones here. Non-essential apps, one of the first steps to regain control over your time, your energy, and your productivity activity is doing this. I did this for every single app again, three years ago, and I haven't looked back. The only notifications I get, be it noise and the little red dot, our phone and text. I think we've all had that experience where we get a buzz or a red dot notification and we're like, oh, we're just gonna check our phones really fast, be it an email or a Facebook notification and minutes or sometimes hours later, we're like, what even happened? What was I doing? And sometimes with those notifications, it feels like you're playing a constant game of whack-a-mole. And I remember feeling like every time I saw a red notification, it meant like my to-do list was growing, right? It was someone to respond to, something to do, a an email to read, et cetera, et cetera. And it just was so overwhelming. So again, when you turn those off, it reduces distraction, it minimizes those constant interruptions to your work day or whatever flow you're trying to be in, cooking, walking, listening to a podcast, all of the above, talking to a friend on the phone. And it enhances your focus and productivity. And in a day and age where everyone's obsessed with productivity and getting more done, reducing notifications and distractions is one of the most underrated, undervalued, under under discussed until today's video topic to do so. And when you do choose to pick up your phone on your accord, you're much more able to engage meaningfully with your device. Number two, delete social media apps. And I know you're like, but really Katie, should I, should I really? Yes, you probably should because by far for majority of people, social media are the biggest time sucks on our phones. And that is by design. There's a quote I read years ago that said, whoever has your time and attention has your money. These apps are just too easy to spend hours on and that is by design. Instead, you can number one, try deleting them or number two, at least log out of them. So every time you go to log into Instagram or TikTok or threads or whatever you're using at the moment, you have to enter your password. And that few seconds will be essentially a friction point for your brain to go, but really, do I really wanna get on Instagram or TikTok right now? No, I would rather go outside and take a walk. So the idea here is give yourself some type of boundary, whether that's deleting or logging out. Or another thing I recommend is for those apps that you're spending too much time on that you wanna simplify and declutter, only use them on your desktop. So maybe you delete Facebook and Instagram off of your phone and only have it on your desktop. Again, this is gonna reduce that mindless consumption that we are all kind of trained to do on our phones. So if you're a little hesitant about deleting social media, even for a little bit or only using on your desktop, I would encourage you to figure out and identify the thing that social media is giving you. Is it giving you validation, connection, community, and basically trying to 
to give yourself that in real life instead of depending on an app. Now, it's not always possible, but sometimes when we're compelled to constantly be on or check social media, identifying the root cause of that can help us replace it with a real life activity. Number three, use do not disturb. Every time I record these videos or anytime I'm working here at my desk in my living room, I put it on do not disturb. Now, if you are worried about texts coming in that you need to respond to fairly quickly, you can also set up a text autoresponder, which I believe if you have iOS 11 or later, you can easily do in your settings. And remember, this is all about your perspective here. Some people say the downside of my tips and like putting their phone on do not disturb is that they don't answer texts and emails immediately. But the upside is that you don't answer texts and emails immediately, right? You are gaining control over your phone, not the other way around. That's the idea behind today's video, right? You are simplifying your mental clutter in conjunction with your digital clutter. Number three is to make your home and lock screen on your phone very boring. And what I mean by that is whatever's on your home or lock screen right now is probably like a picture of your kids or maybe some flowers in your garden or maybe or maybe a picture of your family on a summer trip this year. Every time you pick up your phone and see that picture, you feel good. You get a little mini dopamine happiness hit, right? You're like, oh, look at my beautiful family or my beautiful garden or my awesome cat. If you're a cat lady like me, maybe you got your pet on there, right? So in order to make your phone less enticing, what you want to do is remove that picture of your beautiful family. I know, I know you're going to replace it with something boring. Maybe just the color black, just the color gray, or just the color white. Pretty simple. And pretty immediately you will notice that it's less addictive and tempting to check your phone. I actually did this a few years ago. Black seemed too boring for me, so I did the color pink works like a charm. Even if you just pick one or two of the tips we've talked about so far, by the way, the reality is if you use your phone less, you are going to free up time to do things that you want to do and probably should or need to do anyway. And a lot of this is going to be in really small chunks, right? Maybe you're waiting for your food to come to your table at a restaurant, or maybe you're waiting in the pickup line at school if you're back to school like I am. And hear me out. These can be really amazing opportunities to just take some deep breaths, slow the heck down and think and process and do nothing, which is actually an extremely restorative experience. The next step, which is wildly ironic, is to use apps. Yes, use technology to limit your technology. There are quite a few apps out there. The one I hear the most about is called Freedom and it blocks access to pre-specified apps or websites of your choosing altogether, or you can enable an app blocker when you're trying to focus at work, or maybe if you go, hey, from 4 to 6 p.m. or 4 to 7 p.m. when the kids are in bed, that three-hour window, I really don't want to be on my phone or check my phone. You can enable it to block you from Instagram, all the things that you're tempted to check during that time frame you give yourself. Also, if you're regularly tempted to, say, shop online at night or on the weekends and you're starting to realize this is a pattern that you want support with, use it during those time frames. I promise you it's a game changer. And while we're talking about apps, why not delete the apps that are on your phone that don't serve a purpose, that you don't need, and are literally taking up actual digital space on your digital device. While these aren't all the solutions to fixing your relationship with your phone or decluttering all of your digital clutter, they are a great place to start to start shifting who's in control. So take some time to evaluate your digital clutter today, implement one, maybe two of these tips, and you'll be off to the races with more time, more energy, and more time to just be. Wanna tackle another space? Make sure to watch the video on your screen now.